Hello everyone, my name is Luis Osorio and I am going to talk about a software package called Niche Toolbox. I am a postdoctoral researcher at the Biodiversity Institute of the Kansas University, where I work with Jorge Soberon and Tam Peterson. Before starting, I want to thank to Town for inviting me to the course. So let's start. What are the topics of the talk? Well, we will see what is Niche Toolbox, which is also known as Empty Box. What does the software do? What is the innovation of the package? Meaning, what are the functions that Niche Toolbox has that may not be available in other software platforms? Where to get Niche Toolbox? How to find help? And I am going to give you an example of use where I am going to focus on how to do analysis in the platform without having much care on the modeling process behind it. What is Niche Toolbox? Niche Toolbox is an R package with tools for modeling species niches and distributions. It comes with a graphical user interface developed in the Shiny framework, which is a framework that makes easy to build interactive web applications straight from R. Niche Toolbox has a duality, meaning that you can use it either its graphical user interface or VR commands. This is thought for people that has coding skills that may want to program their, their own analysis or for people that are starting using R and don't have program skills. This is a friendly transition while they are learning to program. As Niche Toolbox is developed in R, it is possible to incorporate all the functions available in other packages. In this plot that I, I show you is a time series of the number of packages in R during 15 years. This is a time series, so let's see. For 2005, there was only one published package and then R started to grow so fast, almost exponentially. And in 2019, there were 12,000 and almost 900 packages. So R has grown very fast. The next slide is just a diagram showing the how R packages are organized, having the base R and core packages at the center and surround, sur surrounded there are all other packages that are famous and th that are very useful for example ggplot and you can as you can see also there are other packages that depend on those packages which is the idea of having this 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 arrangement of the package these packages are on a repository called CRAN and as I told you there are 12,000 and almost 900 packages there. So people that start programming and having their own packages they upload them to CRAN and then uh, they are available for all the people around the world. We can take advantage of that and in each toolbox we have some dependencies on other packages. The next slide, this is a, a diagram showing the two, main, the two main functions of Niche Toolbox. So we have tools to explore geographic and niche spaces and tools for modeling niches and species distributions. So in the R command line, you, sh you should run a function that is called run empty box and it will appear a web application with different tabs and functions. For example, a tab for getting environmental data with options to get WorldClean, Chelsea, BioRacle, and Embryum layers in current time and climate ch change scenarios. The next thing that you can do is perform a spatial filtering for your occurrence records. This is a geographic data and you will find some functions to download GIFI records, to upload your own records, to, to clean your records using 
occurrence thinning created by a flyer and also has, a, has an option to, to see GB visualizations which are pretty cool because you see trends in the occurrence data as how they were reported in GB. The last thing that you will find is a dynamic map which is a helpful, helpful tool that lets you to clean your data points using a leaflet map that lets you to zoom in and to zoom out. After cleaning your data points you can see trends in each space and this is the part for niche space visualizations where you, you can extract the information in your occurrence points and visualize the niche information and trends on those occurrences in environmental space. So we pass from the geographic space to, to the environmental space. Then you have options to, uh, to, to select variables using environmental filtering. There is a method to select less correlated variables and using a correlation matrix, visualize that correlation matrix using a, using a correlogram and after selecting the variables that you are going to use for modeling you have op options also to perform niche cluster analysis showing the groups in geography and also in environmental space. This is called the Hutchinsonian duality where there is a correspondence between geographic space and environmental space. The next uh, section is the ecological modeling tools and there are some algorithms like ellipsoids, bioclean, maxen and there is a map where you can project your models in geographic space. So for ellipsoids there is a model calibration and selection protocol that lets you to select models using ellipsoids in, el in environmental step, uh, space. We are going to see more about this new novel protocol uh, in the next slices. After do performing and fitting ecological niche models you may want to evaluate them and there are tools for evaluate them. The, there is a tab called SDM performance and you will find partial rock, the thresholding methods to binarize your, your maps you can use a uh, confusion matrix and to see the mat matrix based on, on that, that matrix. For example, Kappa or uh, TSS or other measures. And also you can perform a binomial test. Finally, you have tools for those people that are modeling uh, mm, using different time climate change scenarios. There are model transfer tools, for example, the MOB analysis, which is the mobility oriented parity. And then you can estimate the extrapolation risk of your models. There is MESS also, which is an optimized code there is a version of this function in the Dismo package, but we have another version that runs faster. Finally, XDET tools. Uh, this is a uh, niche toolbox lets you to perform univariate and multivariate extrapolation. The, in this part, the last, the last tab is the GIS tools, which is independent of the workflow and you can create cre create polygons, crop or max mask environmental layers and export them into other raster formats. And you can also PCA transform your environmental layers and project them into climate change scenario, this PCA. So in the tutorial that I am going to give you, we will see some of the functions and just wait for the tutorial. Hello everyone, in this section we will see what is the innovation of the package, meaning what are the functions that each toolbox has 
that may not be available in other packages. So let's start by the environmental data where you can have options to get Chelsea data by Oracle and MVM. Most of the package has this function but only work with working data. And in each toolbox, as you can see, you have the, the commands to download that data and also in the graphical user interface. In this example, I use BioRacle and the sea water temperature. Then we have an interactive way to visualize GBIF data where you can see trends in your occurrence points as they were reported in GBIF. You have options to select which countries to see the trend. These are the countries that have reported in GBIF. And then you have a pie chart showing how many records of the total were reported by each country. And also for years, you have a calendar where you can see the dates of the reported records. And then also a pie chart of this year. We will see in the tutorial how to perform this visualization. Then we have the extrapolation risk assessment with tools to estimate the mobility oriented parity, the MOP analysis, which is explained in detail in the paper by Owens et al. And then you can perform also the extrapolation detection tool, the XDET, for both univariate and, uh, and multivariate extrapolation. And finally, the multivariate environmental similarity surface, the MESS, which is published by Elliot, Kearney and Phillips. And there is a, an option in the DISMO package to perform this, this analysis, but in each toolbox, you will find an optimized version of that function that runs fast. The model calibration and selection protocol in environmental space for ellipsoid models. This is novel and it is based on significance and performance. For significance, we use the partial rock test, uh, which you, we can, you can find the details of the test in the paper by Peterson, Papesh, and Soberon in 2008. The performance is archived or estimated using omission rates and the application, the function behind it determines if a given point lies inside or outside of the ellipsoid model. In the next slide, I am going to show you the general idea. Let's see, this is a plot showing the, the points, the occurrence points in environmental space. There are 200 points that are represented in red and in black. Then you will see an ellipsoid model that, were, that was fitted for this data. And you see that some points light outside the model. There, there are like 10 points. And the omission rate or the omission for this, point, this, this data set is 5% using that ellipsoid. The evaluation in environmental space makes the process of calibration and selection faster than those methods that need to create a continuous map right in raster format and then transform it into a binary map in order to compute the omission rates. This model selection uh, model calibration and selection protocol was used in the paper by Osorio Olvera et al where we use this function to estimate distances to an each centroid using ellipsoids and see the relationship between abundance and this distance. We found uh, good relationships and you can see the, the reference if you want to learn more. This slide shows you the output of the function where the algorithm tells you how many models were fitted for this example, there was 140 models uh, using combination of eight variables uh, fitted for, by three dimensions, four dimensions, and five dimensions. And in this example, 
11 models passed the omission rate criteria for train data, 15 models for test data, and only 4 models for both train and test data. This is the output of the function, and you see the variables that were fitted, the number of dimensions, the omission rate for the train and for the test, the p-value for the partial rock, and the AUC ratio for, for the partial rock test. As I told you, if you want to learn more about it, you go to the paper by Peterson, Papesh, and Soberon in 2008. These are the tools to see the Hutchinsonian duality. Once you have selected the best model, given that criteria that we used, you can plot the model. This is a ellipsoid model in three dimensions. This is the environmental space. And you can see in red points are those points that are not suitable. And the points that lie inside this ellipsoid are suitable. And the more blue they are, the, they are more suitable. In this map, you see the projection of that model in geography. And the points in red have a correspondence in here, in these points in red also. The occurrence points that were used to train the model are in black. And as you can see, also in the environmental space, there they are. So this is the Hutchinsonian duality, which tells you that there is a correspondence, correspondence between the environmental space, this in between these points, and the points in geography. Where to get the Niche Toolbox package? Niche Toolbox is on GitHub and can be installed using DevTools package. And this is my repository. And these are the basic installation commands, but we have also a tutorial showing how to install to the different in different operating systems for example in windows linux linux and mac in the tutorial i am going to talk about this so these are the links for the installation notes you will find also a quick reference guide to the graphical user interface where you will see in, de in detail how to perform each of the analysis in the graphical user interface. And there is also a ellipsoid model calibration and se selection tutorial. This is in Fixture, and you can go to this link and download the example. Finally, I want to thank to all my co-authors. These are the pictures of them, starting by me, and then Rusby Contreras, Jorge Soberón, Enrique Martínez, VJ Bar Barbe, Andrés Lira, Manuel Falconi, Town Peterson, and Narayani Barbe. So, and also we want to thank, for, thank you for your attention. And this is how to cite the package. And here are the references.